When I was working on my PhD, I used to teach a intro to film course, and I would teach some simple editing techniques that were used in Hollywood and also in some avant-garde experimental films. And so today I'm going to share with you one very easy editing technique that you can use on YouTube that I use very frequently for opening trading card videos. So this is a great technique to Keep in mind, if you are opening trading cards on camera, if you're a TCG content creator or any kind of channel, I think, or category can also utilize this technique. This is editing on action. Uh, this is one of the primary ways that shots are edited together in Hollywood editing technique. And I'm going to share with you a very basic example of this with some stock footage and then show you how I have used it in a recent trading card opening video. Now, what I'm talking about with editing here is not like special effects or anything. It's when you have two broken pieces of footage that are being joined together. So usually uh, people will do this to jump the camera in, to zoom in a little bit or zoom out or to change the camera position. And that's very jarring for a viewer. So uh, what you do is you use something in those shots that combines the shots. It provides some similarity between the shots, even though other things are changing, even though the camera is changing or something else significant is changing in the footage. So here we have a uh, man hitting the uh, block of wood, just karate chopping it. And you can see that is one unbroken shot. So why would I might want to edit this footage? Well, I want to break it up into two because I actually want to emphasize the breaking of the block. So if I go over here, let's say I want to zoom in on this right when he's connecting with the block. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on my timeline so I can find just that moment where he hits the block, let's say right there. And we can probably zoom in a little bit more if we want to get more precise and it'll allow you to find some additional frames, but this will be sufficient for our purposes. Now I'm going to go ahead and break this up. By the way, you don't have to use DaVinci Resolve. You can use Camtasia or uh, OBS, whatever editing studio you want. I'm not talking about the specifics of the interface with DaVinci. I'm just going over the principle of editing, of bringing different clips together. All right, so I want to emphasize that because what I want to do now that I've broken this shot up in two, I have two different pieces of footage and I want to zoom in on that piece of uh, wood being broken. So let's get really, really close in there uh, once he's broken it so that we can emphasize that we are breaking the wood. So let's get really, really close there. Let's get that. That's going to be sufficient for our purposes. We had a nice in the center of the frame there. And now since we've broken it up, we have edited the shot and you see how effective that is because we've broken it up. We have now zoomed in on that second piece of footage and we have two clips that are edited together. Now, what makes this work? Cause we, we moved in, right? We moved the camera in um, and that's jarring, right? If there's not something that's connecting these shots together. And in this case, it is the action. So the action of karate chopping the wood is in the first piece of footage. And it's in the second piece once we've zoomed in and that, action registers in our brain, allowing us to move the camera in to emphasize it and is not jarring. That action is what is allowing us to edit those pieces together. So this is a very common technique in action scenes. You have people punching and fighting. You see a lot of different camera switches. And what is allowing the camera to do that even very frenetically is the fact that it is like the same punches or kicks that are connecting whatever's happening. Those actions are providing that uh, seamless connection that allows us to jump in. So now this, I'm not completely done now because now it would be nice you know, with a good story. We have a beginning, middle and end. Maybe we can jump back out to our original frame distance. So where would be a good spot to jump back to where we started once we boom, we've we've hit the wood. Let's look for another action. How about rising up? OK, so right where you see we've got a little moment of stasis where he's not moving. And then maybe right here where the knees where we can see him starting to stand up. Let's make another cut. And then we're going to bring this footage here, this last clip back to the original um, frame distance. Now let's watch this all together. We have a little moment there and then he is back up. And here 
when he comes back up, that rising is now the action that allows us to jump the camera back. You don't want to just jump forward sporadically or jump back sporadically. Uh, there are certain rules in Hollywood editing that allow you to make cuts so that you can move the camera around and do it seamlessly. And action is one of the primary ways to do that. So here's an example of where I used matching on action in a more, I guess, uh, unconventional sense. This is just a trading card showcase video. So you see right there, I cut from being close up to uh, my far away shot of the whole play mat. So I have two distances I'm playing with here, an up close shot where I'm showing the cards really up close, like you just saw right there. And then I will cut often back to the whole play mat where I am grabbing another booster pack or sorting the cards into different piles. And it's important to do this because first of all, changing camera distances can help reset your viewer's attention. But again, you don't wanna do it arbitrarily, right? So again, one of the simple ways that you can find a good place to cut to change that distance up is to use mashing on action. So. Uh, right here, again, if we are showing uh, my, my three cards here and then watch carefully what I do uh, with my hands uh, right here, I move them over slightly and that allows a little bit of movement to connect to allow me to move back. And then watch right here as I grab the new stack of the basic cards. As I move them into the center of the frame, I move up uh, the camera. And when I get to the end, watch what I do again here as we get to the last card, Mega Man Legends, I move the card off, slide it, and that slide allows me to reset back to the outer position there, and there it is. So here's one cut there, or I move my hand a little bit. Again, another cut here, where I place the cards in the center, it allowed that to be sort of the cut. A lot of times I'll just, it's right wherever I'm, when I move the cards to the center, that becomes sort of the, the micro action there where I cut on, and then here at the end of that, where I have the last Mega Man Legends card, move it off screen and that movement uh, off screen, then I, I slid it and that became the cut. Here I sort of lifted up the uh, other stack of the cards and let that be the moment where I cut. So you're just looking for some various actions. You know, does this seem like the right time for a cut because you're gonna be reaching over to another piece of the play mat? There's gonna be some moment, uh, some movement involved with that. Wait for your hand to get off the screen, maybe move uh, the card is almost out of screen and then cut there outward. And that movement, again, it's exactly what uh, editors are doing when they're matching action in Hollywood films. You're just looking for any kind of movement there to be the seamless connection to allow you to make that jump, reset your viewer's attention, but not jar them uh, as you're moving through the opening. So trading cards I found is, is really natural for this. You know, there's a lot of moving in the playmat back to the booster box, um, moving to different stacks of cards, highlighting other cards you already pulled that make for really natural moments for moving the camera back or moving the camera forward to highlight something. And what you're doing there is using matching on action to seamlessly make those jumps and make them very smooth for your viewer. I hope you learned something uh, maybe a little bit different today about uh, editing and making YouTube videos. This works for, again, any video, any category, but it can be used for content creation, for trading cards, for collectibles. You know, it seems like a simple thing, opening things in front of a camera, but there is film technique that you can use to your advantage. All right, thanks so much for watching my guide on matching on action for YouTube videos, specifically content creation uh, in my area. And I'll be seeing you in another video very soon. Thank you.